Let's get started. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is the Lowell Public Schools Kindergarten Registration Information Session. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Pickett. I'm the Community Outreach Strategist for the district. And I want to introduce two of my colleagues who will be taking you through this information session this evening. Rebecca Duda is the coordinator of the Family Resource Center. And Kim Balch is with the McKinney-Vento team and handles the McKinney-Vento caseload for the district uh, along with one of our other staff members. So without further ado, let's get underway. Um, and I'm gonna hand things over to Rebecca Duda. Uh, just a reminder, this session is being recorded. And if you want to interact with us, you could ask questions in either the Q&A feature or through the chat feature. And we will have time for questions and, and answers at the end of the presentation. Rebecca? Thank you, Jeff. And welcome to all of our families this evening. We're excited to be presenting this information to you. We know entering kindergarten is an exciting time. It's for many families, the first time that they're joining the Lowell Public Schools. So we're excited to have you this evening and walk you through the process. So let's talk about who is eligible to register for kindergarten. So kindergarten in Lowell, the child needs to be five on or before September 1st of this year. So if your child, as long as your child is five years old on or before September 1st, your child will be eligible to enroll for, for kindergarten. If your child turns five after September 1st, you would be enrolling for preschool. Okay. And if your child is currently enrolled in a low public schools preschool program, which we have throughout the city, you would still need to register for kindergarten. They're two separate programs. And the reason for this is because some families in preschool may choose to go to a private school for kindergarten for whatever reason. So we don't assume all our families are leaving preschool and entering into kindergarten. So you do need to re-enroll. And the other reason has to do with zoning, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation. So right now we're gonna show you a brief video that is an overview of our kindergarten program that we offer here in Lowell. Thanks, Rebecca. And uh, just a, a heads up before we watch the video, um, you'll notice nobody's wearing a mask in the video and the pictures that you see in the presentation, these were all taken uh, last February before um, COVID-19 pandemic had started. So just in case anybody was wondering. So let's get started with the video. Kindergarten is extremely important to me. It's extremely important for the children as well. Um, it gives them that foundation of early learning in um, their elementary school. They go on to become lifelong learners from here. This provides them with a lot of routines and they learn how to work together. They learn how to share. They learn how to listen to a teacher. They learn how to pro, um, interact in a group. They learn how to become a part of a community. In our classroom, we really um, put a lot of focus on building classroom culture and making the children feel welcome in our classroom. So each morning, everyone is greeted when they walk through the door and welcomed into the room. Once we go through the daily routines um, and classroom meetings, we engage in hands-on academic learning. We go through reading groups and writing workshops and math groups. And each of the lessons and each of the students work on their own individual learning level and it depends on their learning style. So we really focus on center-based learning and um, a lot of individualized attention to learning. Children are learning through many different styles in the classroom. There is music played throughout the day. We have lots of movement activities. Um, they are five and six years old, so kindergarten teachers understand that children need to learn through music and movement, get their body moving. Um, it's not just sitting down, paper and pencil. 
Most of the materials that are in the kindergarten classroom are very hands-on. I have lots of hands-on materials to teach the children. Um, our classroom is also filled with lots of visuals. Lowell Public Schools is amazing with training their teachers. We have lots of professional development opportunities. So all of the, ch all of the teachers are very highly trained to reach every learner in Lowell. Also in kindergarten in Lowell Public Schools, we are very fortunate to have a paraprofessional with us all day long. So it's not just myself, it's also a paraprofessional in the classroom for all of the children. So there are two teachers there all day, which is wonderful. The best part of kindergarten for me is to see the children grow. Um, children who are coming in at the beginning of the year and are hesitant to walk through the door and then seeing the transition throughout the year of, you know, not so too writing in school, but writing into those into the classroom and so excited to greet their teachers and their peers. Um, and just seeing a child who may have been timid at the beginning of the year, just flourish and bloom into a reader and to speak in front of their peers. Um, it's really a great opportunity to see children at such a young age grow in the year. I think being in an environment where they're, they feel welcomed and cared for really builds their confidence and it makes them want to come to school each day and it's a great start to their academic career when they feel confident in the school that they're in. Great, thank you, Jeff. That was a wonderful introduction to our kindergarten program. Um, now, kindergarten registration this year will be beginning on May 3rd, which is Monday, Monday, May 3rd. And it will be done online. One of the things that has happened because of COVID is that we've moved all of our, our services online. And of course, the primary service at the Family Resource Center is registering children for school. So in your case, it's kindergarten, and we'll be happy to work with you beginning on Monday with your kindergarten registrations. Now, a few things to consider before you register for kindergarten. Lowell has a school choice system. So the city is divided into two zones. Zone one is in pink on the map, and if you live in zip codes 01851 or 01854, you would be in zone one. The gray half of the map is considered zone two. So if your zip code is 01852 or 01850, you would choose a school in the gray section or zone two. We also have schools that are in what you could consider a third zone. They're, they're citywide schools. So regardless of what zip code you live in, you can apply to those schools for kindergarten and request those schools. One thing to consider um, when you choose a school um, is that you must choose a school in your zone because there's no transportation offered out of zone. And if you're part of our current preschool program, that is something that's different from preschool. Preschool, there are no zones and there's no transportation offered. So most families do select a preschool close to their home. In kindergarten, you would select a school within your zone. In kindergarten students, if they meet the mileage requirement, would be eligible for a bus. So that is a difference from preschool if you're currently attending one of our preschool programs. And this information is online if you go to the Family Resource Center. We have a whole section on registration and you can click on any of these little icons and it will show you the different schools that are available. Oh, Jeff's doing it for us now. Yeah, let me, you, take you, let me take you through this map. It's um, really a neat feature. And as Rebecca mentioned, you can go right on our kindergarten registration website, which will put be providing the link for you a few times throughout this presentation and be able to view this map. And you can go and look at, you know, for example, different schools. So like this is the Pawtucketville and it will tell you the address and it'll give you the website, the principal, what grades it serves, what zone it's in. Let's go to another one of our 
school. So this is the Moody Elementary, which is a citywide. And then let's go to, this is the McAuliffe in zone two, just as an example. So this is a great resource because you can really zoom in closely and see your street and figure out, you know, what zone you're in based on this. this right, and exactly, Jeff, and to see which schools are closest to you, because lots of times families don't want their child traveling, you know, on a bus for 30 or 30, 40 minutes. So this will help you gauge how close you are to specific schools. So again, this shows you um, which schools are available in the different in the different zones. So in zone one, um, we have the Bailey up in the Highlands, the McAvenue over in Pawtucketville, along with the Pawtucketville Memorial, if you're on that side of the river. And we also have the Maury in the Highlands as well, and the Merkland down in the Acre. So those are our zone one schools. In zone two, over in Centerville, we have the Green Hill and the McAuliffe, and then we have the Riley. And then the Shaughnessy and the Washington, those are our zone two schools. In our citywide schools, we have um, three schools that serve grades K through eight. So if you're thinking that when your child transitions to middle school, this is something to consider because as of right now, these schools serve grades K through eight. Those would be the Bartlett, the Pine and the STEM. And then we have two other um, citywide schools, that would be the Lincoln and the Moody. And again, regardless of your zip code, you're eligible to select the citywide schools. The other thing to consider when you're selecting a school are your before and after school childcare needs. And things were a little different this year on what we offered for before and after childcare because of COVID. Um, but we will be sharing any updated information on this link here that Jeff um, has for after school care, for and after school care. And in the past, we've offered CTI and YMCA and things like that. So those are things to consider. I, you know, we're not sure what the fall will bring, but there'll be some options for families. Then just to uh, show you another resource that we have on the website, this page right here, which has an easy to remember URL, uh, lowell.k12.ma.us slash kindergarten registration has all the information that you need, including the zone map and the zone chart. So the map is what we just showed you. And then the chart, has the start and ending times for the schools as well organized by zone. And that's another important factor to consider as well, because you'll notice some of our schools start as early as 740, while other schools start as late as 910. Yes, thank you, Jeff. That is another important consideration for families, depending upon uh, when families maybe need to get out and get to work, right? So there's lots of things to consider when we have a cho school choice system here in Lowell. So we do try to provide you as much information as possible before you get to the actual registration process. Because at the registration process, we'll be asking you for three school selections. So please do, do your homework, right? By giving the parents some homework before registration and select three schools that you think would be a good fit for your family. All right, the other thing um, we ask you, that you do before you register is to gather the required documents that we need to register your child. So every child, when they register school, will need their birth certificate, not the birth record that the hospital provides you, but the actual birth certificate from the municipality, your child's immunization records, the photo ID of the parent or guardian who's registering the child, and proof of low residence. Um, Lowell Public Schools is, is open only to residents of Lowell. So at the time of 
registration, we ask for a copy of your current utility bill. And by utility, we mean your current gas, electricity, or cable bill. And current, we define as really in the past 30 days, okay, within the past month. Or a copy of your current lease or your mortgage statement. So those are the things we'll be asking for registration in terms of documents. And I'll turn it over at this time to uh, Kim Balch, our full-time McKinney-Vento liaison. Well, hello, um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the McKinney-Vento and what we can do to help you. Some families might find themselves struggling um, with housing. And if you find yourself to be one of those people that can't quite qualify when you're looking through that list of things you need to give us for your address. You might wanna reach out and, and speak with one of the McKinney-Vento specialists. I'm here to help. Some of these things we really do, the McKinney-Vento Act is actually a law. So every um, school systems will work with us, whether if you happen to be in a shelter and you get placed in a new city, we will work with you and the other city to provide the best education we can for you and your child. Um, the McKinney staff, myself, Nancy, Fred, Rebecca, um, we all work hard to find resources to help you get what you need, whether that's helping connecting you with CTI or other housing um, agencies. It's something that we can do um, pretty easily from the center as, as long as you give us a call. Um, also, another way um, you could get some more help from us would be if um, I'm sorry, the way you could need us is if maybe you're living with your friend, if you found yourself suddenly not, um, you know, able to stay with your parents for much longer and you need to move out. These are the, before it becomes an emergency, if you can reach out with us, we'd love to be able to help you. Once it becomes an emergency, we can also help you get to those resources as soon as possible so that you and your child can have a place safe to sleep every night and, and know that the next day they can get up and go to school and you can take care of the things that you need to do. But here um, at the Family Resource Center, we're here to help provide you with the resources to get those services and you know um, any other help around those services, I'm here for you. So please, my phone number is on um, the slide. Feel free to give me a call um, or email us and we are very willing to help and um, get you the housing or the services that you need. Great, thank you, Kim. And the other thing I just want to stress that Kim mentioned and it's here on the screen is that even though we require certain documents for registration, if you're unable because of your living arrangement to provide those documents, we will still enroll your child and Kim will help you get whatever documentation it is that, that you're lacking at the time of registration. But our goal is to help families enroll their children into the low public schools. So if you're living in a shelter, hotel, or if you're doubled up with another family, meaning that you can't afford a place on your own, Kim and the staff will help you get the documentation needed. We, we still want to enroll your child and we're here to serve you. So as I said, registration for kindergarten will begin May 3rd, so that's Monday. And the registration will be completed online. You'll go to the link here that Jeff mentioned, kindergarten registration, and you'll complete an online form. And it will ask you for you know, your name, the child's name, date of birth, all of the customary things you would expect. And we will process your registrations. My clerk, uh, my clerks, I should say, I have four of them, work on your um, registrations Monday through Friday, eight to four. So you can actually enroll 24 hours a day. Um, the link is, will be live. So whenever it's convenient for you, you can fill out the form and my clerks will work on making sure you have complete registration Monday through Friday, eight to four, okay? And you will also at the time of registration upload your documentation and you don't need to come down to the office and meet with anyone. It's a perfectly safe environment. We do it online, it's contactless. If you do need support for whatever reason, either with my McKinney-Vento staff 
um, or if you need language support, then you may um, come to the, the resource center and schedule an appointment. I have a little bit of um, feedback. Sorry. Okay, next slide, Jeff. All right, so the, as I said earlier, the registration process will begin on May 3rd and it actually goes until um, July, until July 25th. And the registration period will be split into three rounds. So round one will be May 3rd to May 23rd. So if you register between this Monday and May 23rd, you'll be eligible for our first round of lottery seats because a lottery means that we have more registrations than we have available seats for school. So for whatever reason, if a school happens to be very popular this year and I have 200 kids asked to go to the Shaughnessy, but I only have 88 seats, then I need to put you into a lottery to see who gets those seats and the other children will get hopefully their second choice school, possibly their third. Uh, but we do try to accommodate what the families like and are requesting because we know that you've done your research and these schools are good fits for you. So our first lottery will be held on June 9th and then we will fill part of the seats at that time. And then anyone who registers May 24th to June 20th will be held in the second lottery on July 7th. And then of course, round three for any remaining seats will be done on those dates there. And the last lottery will be held on August 4th, okay? And we do encourage families to register and get into the first round of registrations between May 3rd and May 23rd. That's when you have the best chance of securing a seat in the school of your choice. And we do try to accommodate everyone's request for the seat that you've requested for that particular school. Of course, the later you enroll, the seats will fill up and you are less likely to get what you request. So we do encourage people to register as soon as possible. So starting on May 3rd. And as I mentioned previously, lotteries are held for any school when we have more families requesting a school than we have available seats. Um, and it could happen at any particular school. So we never know for sure, um, though some schools historically tend to be more popular, but it could happen at any school. And the lotteries will also be weighted, meaning that if you do have siblings at a school and you wanna keep the family together as most families do, you will have preference in the lottery. So you'll go higher in the lottery than someone with no siblings in the school. Um, if you do qualify for McKinney Vento Services, you'll also be given preference in the lottery. And we do uh, follow the consent decree uh, regarding minority and non-minority status. So we do try to keep our schools racially balanced. So that's also a consideration as it has been for years. And as I said earlier too, I think I mentioned this, that most families don't want their children going far from their home. So we do consider proximity um, in the lottery as well to your home school. So a lottery will be held after each round of registration. So the first round of registration begins this Monday, May 3rd, and lasts till May 23rd. And we will fill 50% of the kindergarten seats at that time. And the first lottery will be held on June 9th. For the next 25% of seats, we will hold a second lottery on July 7th. And the remaining seats will be filled on August 4th. So everyone will know where they're going to kindergarten by August 4th in plenty of time for school. The school will begin at the end of August or the beginning of September. Kindergarten starts a little later. Okay. So we've 
what happens after you register? So if you're holding, if you've selected a school that's not holding a lottery, you'll receive your school assignment during the summer as seats are filled incrementally, okay? So we will be filling seats all summer, okay? If you select a school that is having a lottery and you receive a seat, you will be enrolled in that school, okay? If you select a school that is having a lottery and you do not receive a seat, you will be part of the next lottery. So for example, if you select, we'll just give an example, the Lincoln School, and they have a lottery, and you don't get a seat in the first lottery in June, you will automatically be placed into the second lottery in July. Because we do want, hopefully, to accommodate everyone, all right? So, and you'll also be offered your second and third choice schools as well. We try not to give a school that you haven't selected. That's not our choice. So that's actually very important. Some families only put down one or two schools. We want you to give us three options because we do want to give you a school that you've selected, okay? And it has happened because I'm the enrollment coordinator where families don't give me another option. And I'm left to just pick a random school. <laughs> And then it's usually the wrong start time or there's no after school care. So please select, your th give us your three options, okay? As far as your, when school begins and your, your children's uh, teacher assignments and you know, orientation, that will all be done by your school itself, by your building principal. They'll have their own orientation program and they'll get you settled into your new school, all right? And once you have re uh, received your placement, you don't re need to return anything to the Family Resource Center. Um, that's a little different than preschool where they have you sign an acceptance letter. We don't do that. Once you receive your assignment, you are all ready to go and you'll be working with your school to get your child ready for kindergarten. And if you have any questions, you of course can contact myself or my staff at the Family Resource Center at any point during this whole process, because there's a lot to take in, especially if this is your first time with us. So at this time, I'd be happy to answer um, questions. Jeff, do we have questions in our Q&A, in our chat? Uh, let's see. So we have somebody wondering if this will recording will be shared later. Yes, it will. It'll be, um, uploaded on the Lowell public schools website and it will is specifically on the registration link that I shared, um, which is the www.lowell.k12.ma.us slash kindergarten registration. Um, we have a question about how do we find out which middle school a given elementary school feeds to? All right. So one thing to consider, and this is something I know families consider is the middle school that an elementary school feeds into. So by that, it means our elementary schools go grades K through four, some, sometimes pre-K through four, and then fifth grade, they, the children move on to middle school. Um, at this time, we do have a feeder pattern, um, and I can send it to you if you request it. But bear in mind that that feeder pattern is subject to change. So what I give you now could be very different in three or four years. So, for example, um, the McAvenue School feeds into currently the Wang over in Pawtucketville, if you're on that side of the river. But I can't guarantee that by the time your child gets to fifth grade, it would be the Wang. Um, it's subject to change. That's a long time. But if you ask, I'll be happy to tell you what potentially could be your feeder school. And I see another question here. Um, how long between May 3rd and when families will hear where their child is placed? Well, you, I have until August 4th to send out information. So placements will be done all summer. 
but the soonest you'll, you might hear would be in June at our first lottery. It won't be before June. Um, this is a good question about the lottery to follow up on that. So if we're in the first lottery, but don't get our first school choice June 9th, which is the date of the first lottery, do we automatically get entered into the second and third lottery to try again? Yes. Yes. Unless, you're, unless your choices have changed. You know, sometimes families change their mind and if they're happy with their second choice. But yes, if you really want that first choice school, we will re-enter you into the lottery. This isn't a question, but it's always nice to hear a compliment. People appreciating the uh, session tonight. So we thank you very much for, for joining us, Lauren, who with that, with that very nice comment. Um, let's see. Um, so I'm moving to Lowell from far away and don't know um, anyone in the area. Aside from the department website, what is the best way to learn about each school? Will there be tours? Great question. I see this from um, Caitlin Rowley. So hi, Caitlin. Welcome to Lowell. I'm glad to see that you're moving here. Um, I would reach out to the building principals. Typically, we would have had uh, kindergarten tours probably back in February and early March. But because of COVID, the buildings, we can't have the tours in the buildings. But if you reach out to the building principal, um, they'd be happy to share information. And each school has their own website as well. And they usually have their own Facebook page. Um, but the building principals would be your contact. If this is a school that you're interested in in your neighborhood or in the city. And, and if you go to the map, that we showed earlier, that has all of the names of the principals and contact information, website information for individual schools. Um, what are kindergarten class sizes? Um, have they been reduced due to COVID or are they the same as pre-COVID? They are the same as pre-COVID. We aim to have 22 children in a kindergarten class. That's the goal. Now, if it happens to be a large cohort, meaning a large kindergarten class, then the class size may be bigger. It could also be a little smaller. So for example, our current grade two students, we tend to have 25 children in a class across the board because there happens to be a large class. Um, the current kindergarten class tends to be a little smaller, more like 20 students in a class. So we do aim for 22. Um, it's hard to say how many kids we'll end up with this year because I haven't seen the numbers yet, but that is the, the goal, 20 to 22. Um, we have a, a question about the lottery. Do you have the option to possibly get your second choice school after the first lottery rather than continuing to the next one and possibly getting bumped to your third choice as you move to the next lottery? So basically, um, after that first, let's say just to use concrete examples, you signed up for the Pawtucket bill as your first choice and you didn't get that in your, um, the lottery, but the McAvenue was choice number two. And you say, I would just like to go to the McAvenue. Is that something you could do Rebecca after the first lottery? Yes, Jeff, it is absolutely. And that's a good example. That happens a lot with that uh, neighborhood because people don't want to travel across the bridge, right? So that's a good example. Uh, though it could happen with any any choices, but you, you are correct. Um, if you didn't get in the first lottery and you really want to just settle the, the plans for your family because you need to organize your work schedules or after school babysitters, yes, you can just notify us and we will put you in your um, second choice school and take you out of the subsequent lotteries. So we have another question that's similar. Let me just read through it, make sure that where it was an ask coming from a different angle. All right, so if you, can you lose out on choice two if you're holding out for choice one? Yeah, you could. So that's yeah. something to keep in mind. That is something to keep in mind, right? If you are gonna hold out to the very end because you really want choice one, you do, run the, the risk that that choice two school could fill up. Um, so 
that's something for the families to consider, you know. Uh, I'm in the middle of purchasing a home in Lowell, closing in the next few weeks. I won't have proof of residency for some time. What paperwork can I submit? So this was um, from uh, Ms. Franco asking this question. Okay, so you can still submit the, the registration form. And once you have your, your um, you know, closing, your purchase and sales agreement or your first mortgage payment, most likely the purchase and sales will take it at that time because we're only talking a few weeks. Um, however, we, if you don't have it by the time, you know, we give you your school assignment probably by mid-August, right? By the last lottery, we would hold that school assignment because you do need to have proof of residency. Um, but in this particular case, we're only talking a couple weeks, so we would work with the family. Um, somebody wants to ask a question verbally, which we can do. So Amanda, if you're with us, um, can you raise your hand on the Zoom? All right, and we will allow you to talk. This is actually an option for anybody. If you'd rather ask your question verbally, um, just raise your hand and we will, um, we will get to you. So Amanda, we're, just bear with us one second and you will be joining us with audio. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, um, so I know that it determines, um, a lot of like things determine if the uh, siblings go to the school. It That's depends correct. whether your kid um, will go to that school as well. I heard for kindergarten. Right. So we do try to keep families together. It's been very rare that I've ever had a family want children in more than one school. That's challenging. Right. So we do try to keep um, the children together. Now, there are some things that might be, be out of my control. For example, if the kindergartner is on an IEP and receives special education services and they need specific programming to meet their needs in their IEP, then the special education department may place them in a different school other than their siblings. So that would be something out of my control, for example. But we right. do make so, every effort to place the siblings together. So I, my daughter doesn't have any siblings. So I was just seeing if the chance of her getting into the first pick school is obviously going to be a little, um, it could be, you know, determine whether or not she goes to that school because some other kids might have their siblings going to the same school as yeah, them it's, more. It's yeah. possible. I mean, if the, if the school happens to have a lottery and I have 10, you know, and I have to hold a lottery for school and mm -hmm. say there's 10 kids in the kindergarten class that have siblings, then yes, they would be um, ahead of you on the lottery list. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to say because we're in hypotheticals, right? I don't know how many right. families no. are going to apply who have siblings or may have McKinney Vento services or things like that. So, but it is, I, it is in fact possible. Yes. I just have one more question. Um, sure. Um, also, what if you're on like the line of districts, like you're also on the line of district one and two, like you have two schools that are literally one seven minutes, the other one is the just other direction seven minutes, they like literally right next to you both schools. But you're in. Every, every school, every street, every address is connected to a zone. So you yeah, can't I'm in be zone in two. one. Yep. So I'm in zone one. And also I'm on the line of zone one and zone two. So if I look at the map that you guys provide on the website, yep. it's like, I'm like, right i'm literally right on like the, the yeah, line. i know i know where yeah. you probably are too probably up near the bailey and the washington is my guess um um actually no, i'm just guess, i'm, I'm um, just guessing because that happens a lot in that neighborhood um so here are your options you are according to you in zone one mm -hmm. so if you're interested in having transportation at all you must pick a zone one school or a citywide school um, and I'll talk about the re transportation mileage requirements in a minute. If, uh, Ms. Silva, you do decide to choose a school where you're right on the line, which is in zone two, you will have no transportation options. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that is something to consider. We do not encourage families to pick out of zone um, because if they have challenges with transportation for whatever reason, um, then we, we can't really give you any support. So right. 
Okay, so that is something to consider. Now, speaking to transportation, we are anticipated to go back to the previous um, transportation mileage requirements. So for elementary schools, that would mean if you live more than three quarters of a mile from your school, you would be eligible for a bus, okay? Um, this year was different because of COVID and bus regulations and spacing. So currently, as it stands, the school committee intends to go back to the previous mileage requirement, okay? Um, if there is an issue with the documents submitted, will we be notified before August? Yes. As soon as you start submitting everything, my clerks start reviewing documents and working with families to resolve any issues. Um, we went over transportation. Uh, would a car registration work for proof of residency if the utilities mm -hmm. aren't in your name? No, a car registration. Um, the bills need to be connected to something in the home. So, um, so by the think of it, where you live has electricity, right? So that's why you get the electricity bill. Um, same thing with the cable or the uh, gas bill. So if you're having struggles with getting um, the proof of residency, that's when you should reach out to Kim. Okay, <laughs> and Kim will work with you. Okay, um, uh, Kim, so don't can you put your phone number in the um, the chat. I'm putting the general family resource phone and email that okay, you can. Sure. If you have any questions, um, you can reach out. Sure. Specific questions about um, you know residency or uh, you know bills and and things like that. So it's Family Resource Center at lowell.k12.ma.us is the email. And the general phone line for the Family Resource Center is 978-674-4321. All right, so right, can we go Jeff documents needed again, Rebecca? Let me go pull up that slide. Sure. All right. Um, do we see the slide? No, not yet. All right, let's. Rebecca, if you could start going over that and I'll get this. Sure. Slide. So the documents that are required to register um, would be your child's birth certificate, your child's immunizations, a copy of your photo ID, and for proof of residency, we're looking for a gas bill, an electric bill, or a cable bill, or your lease, or your mortgage statement. Now, if you're living with another family and you can't provide that, then that's when you want to reach out to Kim, all right? And Kim has provided her phone number in the um, chat box. And most likely, you'll be completing a third-party affidavit. And I see another question here about um, third-party affidavits and notary. So work with Kim if you have any questions about um, completing a third-party affidavit because you don't have the required uh, utility bills. Again, I'll share the I'll share the screen, and then I'll also share the McKinney Bento screen again. So again, this is just go reiterates what Rebecca just said once it loads. All right, so questions about our documents, okay. And of course, we have our McKinney Vento contact information at the bottom. So if you don't have those utility bills in your name and they're in the name of the person with whom you're living, that's when you wanna reach out to Kim, okay? All right, let's see some other questions. Um, we received another zone question. I think you answered that, Rebecca, about choosing a school out of zone. Um, yes. but again, if you, if you feel that some of these questions aren't dealing with your case specifically, please feel free to reach out to us 
following up um, after this session. Um, I see a question, Jeff, about how do I determine if a school goes to lottery? Yes. So a school goes to lottery if I have more people request that school than I have open seats. So I said that our goal is to have 22 children in a classroom. So if, for example, you want to go to the Moody and they have two kindergarten classrooms, they have 44 available seats. Well, if 80 kids want to go to the Moody, then I don't have enough seats. So that would trigger a lottery. Okay. I have a question here. If you want to get your child evaluated for an IEP, does it matter which school is selected at registration? Good question. Um, no, it does not. You may request an evaluation regardless of what school you select in your school and which school your child is assigned to. And if you are interested in having an evaluation because you think your child might qualify for an IEP, then you should contact Kim Porter. Um, Jeff, could you put Ms. Porter's um, email in the chat? Is it Kay Porter? Yes, Kay Porter. Kim uh, Porter is our special education liaison. In case you're listening um, to this, you can't, it, and you're watching it on demand, um, you can't see the chat, so I'll read it out loud. Oh. It's Kay, okay. Por Kay Porter, that's K-P-O-R-T-E-R at lowell.k12.ma.us. She's a special education liaison, and she would be happy to assist any families who have questions about IEPs or requesting an evaluation. So we had a question if registration form could be submitted prior to May 3rd, knowing that they won't be processed until the 3rd, or will the link not be available until the 3rd? Can, um, the link currently is not. It won't be available. Mark. It's it not available. We no. will be posting it 9 a.m. Monday morning, the 3rd. And as long as you fill it out by May 23rd, that suffices. It doesn't matter what order. If you're sent, submitting it May 3rd, May 7th, May 17th, it's all in the same pool. That is correct. Yes, you do not need to register on May 3rd, okay? If for whatever reason you, you're busy on May 3rd and something happens, you, you have just the same amount of odds of, of the lottery if you happen to choose a lottery school if you register on May 10th, okay? Um, does my child need to have the COVID vaccination to enroll? Currently, COVID guidelines in Massachusetts are 16 and older are, are eligible to receive the vaccine. So that's something that we would be following state guidelines on and would be sure to let families know if and when that guidance changes. Um, we have some more questions about what counts as sufficient documents. So Rebecca, if somebody, for example, had somebody write a letter on their behalf, is that something that could count, you know, maybe somebody is living with another relative, doesn't, you know, um, and it's their house, could they vouch for that family? Um, sort of. Um, we typically, if we got, we do receive letters like that. And that's when I would refer that again to Kim Balch and my McKinney Vento staff. And most likely that family would be asked to complete a third party affidavit. So yes, you can submit that if that's all you have. And then we'll work with you to get um, something that the school department can accept. Um, will there be a list posted of schools that will have a lottery? There, yes, I, we can make that public once I know that information, but I won't know until the end of the registration period. Um, and then also we have a question um, I live in zone one, but work at a school in zone two and would like my child to attend the school I work at. Am I still able to register her at the school I work at? I will provide transportation both ways. Yes, but I can't guarantee that's fine. You can, you can request a school out of zone as long as transportation is not an issue. 
However, I can't guarantee at this time that you in this particular case would be guaranteed a seat in that school. Should that school go to a lottery, you would need to secure the seat through the lottery process. Being an employee does not um, necessarily guarantee a seat. Uh, we're getting some questions about whether or not we'll be back on campus next fall fully. That is the goal, right? <laughs> That's the goal. So, but yeah. of course, as we've all learned the past year, we can't predict the future. So, but that is the goal to have all the children in person. So we have a few minutes left. Um, are there any questions? Raise your hand, maybe if you haven't. Uh, Trisha, I see, just raise um, raised your hand. Would you like to address us uh, verbally? Crystal as well. So uh, just drop us a note, Trisha and Crystal in the chat or Q&A just to let us know um, if you would like to address us verbally or just submit a question in writing. All right, so Trisha, we're gonna um, welcome you aboard. And then Crystal, I see your question here, which we will get to after Trisha's question. Yes, hi, good evening. I was just wondering um, once school does start um, for the kindergarten kids, if the parents will be allowed to enter the building with the child to see their first day of school? Uh, that's a great question. I can't answer that at this time, to be honest, because we don't know what's going to happen with COVID and the different safety precautions. So ideally we okay. would like that to happen, but I can't actually answer that at this time. Okay, thank you. Did I give a call back like for the when it gets closer to the school year? Yeah, that's really something that will need to be done closer to the right. school year, ma'am. Right. Trisha, okay, I, I imagine that as we get closer to the school year, we'll have communication from our schools about first day of school procedures. And so okay. I would be on the lookout for that. But that I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that sort of communication until August, um, later mm -hmm. in August. Okay, and would that information be sent via email? Um, yes, it would. I it would be sent either through email, phone call, text message. Um, however, the school is sending out uh, that particular message to families. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. You. So, Crystal, we have a question. Um, all right. When we register, will it tell us what time each school starts at? Um, so is that something that's listed on the registration page or should you print out the list of start times before Rebecca? I would probably recommend doing that research before you get to the registration process. So I would look at those start times on that list that's located on our registration page. Yeah, let me take everybody to that page. I could show you. Exactly. I, I'll provide the direct link into the chat as well, but let me just show everybody how to get to our kindergarten registration resources. So here's our homepage. And if you go on to, we call this the banner part of the homepage. The second picture is about kindergarten registration. You can click read more or if you're on any of our school websites, the district news section, the second item is about kindergarten registration information. If you click either of those links, it will take you to the same destination. And this is all of our information about kindergarten registration. And one of the top things is before you register is it about identifying your three school choices. You can click on the zone map, which was the pink and gray map that we showed you earlier. This zone chart has the start and end times for each school. And this is something that's posted right on our website and it's a eight by 10. Nigel, are you eating? So you'd be able to easily be able to um, look that up before you register. No, I think so. Did All we, right. I think Amanda had her hand up again, Jeff. We yes. have time for another question. 
We do. Amanda, I just asked uh, for you to unmute. Sure. Let's see. Can Thank we... you. All right. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so I'm sorry. Uh, I might have missed this part, but so submitting all of the documents is done online. So I'd have to like scan it or is like pictures, like uh, pictures. Uh, yes. You take pictures, ma'am. Okay, oh, you can good. scan either. We accept both. Okay. But most I'm like, I'm the... like, oh gosh, I haven't used my printer since 1902. So I don't even know if it's still. No, most people like use a... their cell phone and just take um, pictures and upload them. So that's you can do that with all everything like her um, immunization that that I have so everything could just be sent in that way right yes ma'am awesome sorry thank you that's okay Jeff I think I saw a question somewhere about an IEP yes uh, I just pulled um I just all right so if if my child gets evaluated after school begins and requires an IEP will my child be moved to another school. So let's say you're placed in one school, but your IEP, you're diagnosed, then what happens? Great question. Um, the answer is depending upon the services your child would require for his or her diagnoses, the child could be moved by the special education department to another school. Um, but again, that would be driven by the services the child would require and some programs are only in specific schools. Um, so it is possible the child could be moved if we, but we will do everything we can to keep the child where they are. We don't like a lot of transitions. So we had a question about before and after school programming and transportation for the programming and what programming is available at each school. For after school care? Yes. Right. So um, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to have next year. So you should watch the um, website and Ms. Roshilo, who coordinates those programs, will keep that updated. Um, COVID this year has changed what we offer at different schools. Um, so for example, historically, I would have been able to tell you that CTI would be at the Rogers School, for example. But with COVID, I'm not 100% sure, and it's a little too early to say. So please watch that website that we showed you earlier on before and after school. As we wrap up 7.30, here's just some contact information to be able to um, assist you if you need to reach out with any questions. I would just like to thank all our families for attending and we look forward to working with you and welcoming you to the Lowell Public Schools. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you.